Alright, here we go. Using that first row to make zeros in the first column. I can make that a zero by just doing 1 minus 1. So I'm going to do row 1 minus row 2 to make my new row 2. So row 1 minus row 2 to make my new row 2. Leaving that first guy the same. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus a minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. I can get this zero at the same time by doing negative 5 times row 1 plus row 5 plus row 3. So if I do negative 5 times row 1 plus row 3 to make my new row 3, I'll get negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Negative 10 minus 8 is negative 18. Alright. Uh, 5 plus 13 is 18, negative 25 plus 7 is negative 18. Wonderful. All right. So now what we're going to do is use my second row to get zeros in my second column. I'm only going to go for the bottom one to make it easy on myself to pull out the matrix as far and pull it out of the matrix as fast as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'll take Using that second row again, get my zero in the second column, I'll do six times this row plus that row. So six times row two plus row three to make my new row three. Leaving those first two rows exactly the same, I'll do six times row two plus row three to make my new row three. So zero plus zero is zero. 18 minus 18 is 0. Negative 18 plus 18 is 0. Uh, 18 minus 18 is 0. All right, I got more zeros than I planned. <laughs> I've got a whole row of zeros. This translates to 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0, which means that 0 equals 0, which is strange, but true. And this is the case where there are an infinite number of solutions. And so what we're going to do is we have a free variable. I'm going to let z be whatever it wants. I'm going to let z equal some variable t. And then I'm going to back up to this row here. And this equation here means that 3y minus 3z equals 3. So 3y minus 3z equals 3. So I'll, I'm going to solve. I know that z is t, so 3y minus 3t equals 3, and I'm just going to solve for the y. So 3y equals 3t plus 3, so divide by 3, y equals t plus 1. All right, fine. Now we're just going to bounce it back up to this first row, and this means that x plus 2y minus z equals 5. So x plus 2y minus z equals 5. So I'll have x plus 2, and the y is t plus 1, and the z is t, and that equals 5. So now we just solve for x. So x plus 2t plus 2 minus t equals 5. So that's x plus t plus 2 equals 5, just combining like terms. So x equals uh, 3 minus t. So now, when we go to write our equation, it's uh, x is 3 minus t, or our answer in ordered pair, or ordered triple in this case, excuse me. So x is 3 minus t, y is t plus 1, and z is just t. Now, to make it less abstract, what this means is I can choose any number I want for t, absolutely anything, and it'll make a uh, solution to this. So to give you a couple examples, let's say that t equals, I don't know, what's your favorite number? Let's say t was 5. 
So this is going to be, hopefully not too big, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, 5 plus 1 is 6, and t is 5. So if I put this in here, it should work. So if x is negative 2 and y is 6, so that'll be plus 12, and z, so minus 5, does this equal 5? Cross your fingers. 10 minus 5 is 5. Check. Try them in this guy. So x was negative 2 minus the y was 6 plus 2z's, so plus 10. Does this equal 2? Cross your fingers. Negative 8 plus 10 equals 2. Yes, it's working. If we plug it in again, it should work for the last guy too. Uh, x is negative 2, so this is negative 10 minus 48 plus 13 times 5, 80. Does this equal 7? Oh crud. No.